Nicola Cromatti is one of the pillars of Fred. He did all a huge analysis of all the audio clip in English just to understand uh, the, the different reaction of the, of the students. Uh, and we have to thank uh, the, the European Parliament if we find Niccolò Comotti actually because he was part of 28, at, at the time 27 times cinema, which is a project promoted by the European Parliament that takes 28 young uh, cinema lovers to the Venice Film Festival and where we took most of our people, I have to say. Niccolò. Hello. Um, so, uh, for the school project, the first year, um, it was a lot of work and uh, I had fun. Uh, my main responsibility was to monitor the students' analysis and gather such information in, in open reports, one of each for the four films, uh, whereby clear subgroups uh, would highlight similarities and disparities in the way the students perceive the films and their content. Uh, sounds pretty dry, but it was pretty fun. Um, so let's uh, visualize uh, the journey of Fred as cool content. This is a beautiful kind of journey of all the content. So uh, Fred Film Radio pretty much, uh, thanks to my movies, we screen the films uh, in all the different eight European countries uh, on set dates. So the kids watch it, they debate, they create radio content, and I'm in between the radio content and the, its publication right there. So. Um, well, pretty much on a daily basis, uh, Fred Film Radio's servers would be kind of flooded with uh, content by all over the place. And um, since, um, sadly, I don't know eight European languages, I only kind of gathered the information within English, the English content. And uh, so once I received from the school, I, it was time to kind of catalog and safely store the audio reviews in my report. And I created thus seven loose um, subgroups, film appreciation, uh, subject matter, culture, setting, and language, uh, characters, cinema language, extra, uh, and experience. So yeah, if you want to see how they look like, the report is something like this. I, <laughs> I've of course deliberately put it all kind of out of focus, so you need to listen to me and not read that. So pretty much this was my, my way to dissect all the content that I received and uh, and navigate through it as well. So, but. Um, for each single film, of course, you, you kind of see like four of them somewhere there, superimposed. Uh, but if you reread and uh, combine the reports all together, uh, the overall picture is even more stimulating. I mean, the multitude of uh, the analysis regarding the characters, the settings, the director's stylistic choices, uh, highlighted some really original and uh, fresh ways to look at films. As well, of course, grouping uh, all the, um, and seeing national and international trends and kind of cultural preconceptions. <coughs> Sorry, cultural preconceptions. So if we um, keep going as well with, for example, if uh, Russia, the main character from Eat, Sleep, Die, was uh, unexplainably rude and reckless for a large number of French, Spanish, and Italian students, uh, the students actually from Croatia and Iceland found her very engaging and inspiring uh, with her strength and the no-nonsense <laughs> kind of approach to life and the hardships of it. So that was kind of interesting. Same with uh, Illegal, because um, it's kind of opened up and revealed a shocking world that was unknown to the Northern European countries, but it kind of re-evoked the ghosts of, uh, of a dark past from the students in Southeastern Europe. Um, so furthermore, actually I want, to, um, I want to kind of stress the importance, I think, and the relevance uh, that uh, the selection and the order of the four Lux Prize films played. Uh, they were fundamental factors in the sort of successful crash course in uh, film literacy. The crash course part of it uh, wasn't really meant at the beginning of, uh, at the inception of the, of the project, uh, but even with this kind of tight schedule, um, that didn't stop the students from really making huge progress uh, in the way they related to films and cinema. But uh, let me explain why I think the very order uh, played a key role in this. I mean, if you use the uh, students' terms uh, to define the four films and stick into the film appreciation column, uh, the films would be described as uh, such. Let's just see a bit of the little posters. So, illegal, graphic and brutal, Academia Platonos, comic, static, Islip Die, realistic, boring, uh, Io sono lì, poetic, interesting, which kind of sounds like, I mean, not of an all right analysis, but this is far from the real project experience. In fact, if we take into account all the columns of the seven subgroups, uh, and, the, and therefore the whole opinions of all the students, these are the actual results. Illegal was a shocking opener 
it established the students from the comfort zone. It showed eye-opening and intellectually violent material, but it's purely based on reality. So a true story, um, but the world out there is much more than we think. And then we have Academia Platonos, which is, its role was instead kind of shedding a new light on filmmaking. So stillness, lack of money, and abundance of uh, in inventiveness, uh, dark humor, all these were kind of new tropes uh, that broadened the student's perception uh, of what can be cinema. Uh, Islip Dial, uh, if, sorry, Islip Dial uh, revealed actually the power of the so-called slice of life cinema. Uh, so you, you don't only have to have like Hollywood intricate uh, plots, explosions, or uh, Robert Downey Jr., but also in everyday life, the unexpected, the unwanted, can be the most gripping of all plot twists. And then, therefore, we rejoice with Io Sono Lee, which after the kind of aforementioned harsh spooling in film literacy, um, the students approached this poetic film by Andrea Segre. And therefore, thanks to the other films, the students, uh, the students approached Io Sono Lee with almost different dialectics. So it wasn't anymore about high expectations, but the desire to understand and to speak back. So uh, with the fourth film, I came to listen to insightful critiques, uh, mature and empathetic um, takes on the characters and their psychological and narrative significance, uh, a palpable will to actually understand why the director uh, took certain choices rather than simply denying them as not my thing. So uh, long story short, it did happen. In, four, in only four screenings, the students uh, learned to tackle cinema in a different way, so it's not just entertainment, but every single film represents a multiple, a m multiple worlds. And well, far from shouting, you know, mission accomplished, uh, I think, I mean, the process towards film literacy is long and complex, but if these are the pre premises, I think, you know, it's gonna be also very exciting. Thank you.